Welcome back to the Flat Scots YouTube channel, fans. I just came back from sodium, as you saw in the intro, uh, the time lapse. I was picking up a few things. Got a call last night uh, from a friend and one of the guys that actually is a cameraman uh, for Lateral Media and has been on many of the shoots for me at Flats Class Television. But he's also a pretty successful YouTuber in the Tampa market. You know Thawney as a pier fisherman, a seawall guy, a shoreline fisherman. But from time to time, he will jump on a boat and take his audience fishing with him. Well, tomorrow, him and I are going to collaborate. We're going to meet on Florida Sports Coast, which is right there in the Newport Ritchie Tarpon Springs area. And I want to show him around. And with some of the stuff that I picked up from Sodium, we're going to get him out from behind the camera and put him on the pointy end of my boat. And we're going to see what Thawney's all about. And I've got some great baits and tactics I want to try out on him because I'm getting ready to start my grind with clients again. Let's come over here and see what I picked up at Sodium. If you've never been to Crystal River and checked out sodium fishing gear in person, which I highly recommend you do, you can always shop right here at sodiumusa.com and pick up anything you could ever imagine. Because if they don't have it, I can tell you right now, stop looking. All right, let's see what I picked up. Spill everything out of the bag. And little bit of Seaguar 30, jerk shads in the 4-inch variety, jerk shads in the 5-inch variety because we're going to be working, that's why I picked these swivels up because we're going to be working the donkey rig a little bit tomorrow with, with uh, Donnie. Uh, wanted to make sure I got a couple of papa mullets. I love papa mullets, not just for trout, but this time of year when you get a little bit of breeze, it's nice to have it. Picked up a couple of bullet weights uh, from Fitzgerald because I know that I'm probably going to be using some Texas rig. Picked up some click minnows because um, these are good little baits. Chin locks, uh, another color variety of the scented jerk sheds. Jerk sheds work really good this time of year. Uh, picked up some extra darters and a six inch because that's probably what I'm going to use with those bullet weights. Uh, I love these 1 12th of an ounce. They're super light, and with the jerk sheds, they, they, they create a super slow fall. Probably my all-time favorite trout color, which is dark and stormy. What else do we got here? A couple of mustad grip pins, because I'm looking for some weight differences. Uh, another click minnow. Even picked up some heavy uh, flipping hooks. Uh, the new chatter spike. This is a cool little thing that's it's a lot like if you guys like throwing little johns, you're going to love throwing the chatter spike. So we're going to give that a shot. Uh, another pop of mullet. And uh, just some odds and ends here. But just something I needed to pick up some stuff. I wanted to show you guys um, some of the rigging things. And now when I put the outfits together or, or the setups together this afternoon so that I'm all prepared. Now, I would love to be going in my Eldora. But we're not, because uh, Thawney puts together some really high-end stuff. So I'm going to be pulling the cover right there off my Hell's Bay Professional and getting that one gussied up for tomorrow's trip. So let me let me start rigging some rods, and, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right. Let me show you what we're going to do. Uh, and this is not by any means a standard starting lineup for me when I go fishing. It's just because Thawney's going to be hanging with me tomorrow. And I want him to try some things that typically he may not try. So I, I don't know what his quote unquote favorite artificials are. But uh, you know, 
for me, you guys have seen me talk about this forever. I cut a little piece of Elastec off here. This stuff is amazing. If you're using any other soft bait, I'm telling you right now, it's inferior. So knowing that he probably doesn't use Z-Man as much as I do, I came up with some interesting things for a starting lineup. So uh, one of the first things we're gonna try, um, quite honestly, is this new profile that came out this year. Now it's four bladed baits. It's called the Chatter Spike. And uh, let me unwrap my rods. I've got a great habit of doing this so I don't get them tangled up. Chatter Spike's a lot like a Little John, um, about the same size, but you see how much action that articulated tail has? Has a ton of action. You can see it's actually ribbed. So when it's on a bladed bait, it really doesn't distort the vibration. But it is a fantastic Texas rig bait that has a great glide action and the tail kind of swings around. And you can give this thing in a short distance, you know, more moves than, dare I say, an exotic dancer. I'm just saying. So one of those cool baits that a lot of folks haven't tried yet. It's mostly the bass guys that are using it. But I've been using it in saltwater and it works great. So I want to kind of expose them to that. Uh, another another setup I, I pulled out for them is many of you see me use the six inch darters. We use it for cobia fishing. We use it for the big trout season when February and March comes. And then we use it a lot uh, in the fall and again in the spring for snook. But one of the things that's really worked for me um, in, in a lot of scenarios, especially when the fish are maybe a little tougher to catch, is I take the six inch darters and I take a pair of scissors and I cut it down to four inches. I put it on a little jig head and because it has that little shrimp tail and it has a lot of moves, I bounce this around again, like the mirror lure little John in the holes and that tail kind of just waves around, has a lot of action even when you're not doing anything. So another bait, kind of modified that I wanted to expose Thawney to. Um, so hoping that he will grab onto a couple of these ideas and do some of his own videos. Then uh, something that you're going to look at, oh, CA, this is not new. Everyone knows that this material floats. So what I do is I put a real short leader. This is 30 pound leader, probably only about 15, 16 inches of it. I put an unweighted, this is a light wire mustad grip pin hook, but there's no weight underneath it. The material is buoyant enough where it doggone near floats, okay? It almost floats. It just is a tad negative, so it's a super slow float. But what we do with this is we use it like a top water. So twitch, twitch, you walk the dog with it, and it barely gets under the surface every once in a while, breaks the surface, barely gets under the surface, and it, it just works the top of the water column back and forth, dipping out of the water. And it gets whacked a lot. And because it's Texas rig, you know, we're going to have high water tomorrow. We've got an approaching front. He'll be able to throw it up close to some of the mangroves. So I think rig this way. Now you rig a standard plastisol bait that, you know, every bait company has. It'll just sink and fall on the bottom layover. Not this one. Even when it falls all the way down, tail floats up. Looks like a feeding fish. Z-Man really has this stuff wired, so big deal to me to expose them. This is a fun setup here. This is what I call the donkey rig. Now the donkey rig, and I'll explain it to him on camera tomorrow, is kind of cool. And I'm gonna say it's kind of cool for this reason. What you got is you got a tandem rig here with two different baits swinging around. And I'm using four inch baits, because again, I'm using unweighted uh, mustad hooks. Believe it or not, this stuff does not get tangled. And what happens are these two baits just swim like this when you're working them through the water. I have enough leader material and these two swivels up here that keep these two baits apart that will, it will give it enough negative of uh, float where when it comes to the water column, if he's throwing it in two, three, four foot of water, it's going to drive trout nuts. Has a crazy good action because it is Elastec. Uh, it's important to have the back bait heavier than the front bait. Well, you're like, well, they look the same. They're the same size, 
but this is a two-aught hook and this is a three-aught hook back here and the leader's a little longer which gives it a little bit more weight so it will stay below the front bait so pretty enticing deal that's going to be a lot of fun if he has some success with that one i guarantee you he'll be using it all the time you're probably thinking what are you going to use man i'll tell you what the last couple of videos we've been using the duke dog i'm going back to using the duke dog i love this bait it covers a ton of water and i've gotten so many good reactions out of this not only with clients but my son just did a video with my wife with that bait and then uh I did tie on the tried and true always get a bite 17 mr from mirror lore that is the uh <clears throat> the, the pro series little speckled trout looks a lot like a pinfish in the water or a small grunt and everything's going to eat that but i got a feeling i'm going to be push pulling a lot and unless the wind really gets up where i put the move down i'm probably going to let thani have most of the fun in this one all right I can't wait to get all this stuff together. I got to get the tarp off my, my pro and start getting it charged up. See you at the ramp tomorrow. It's going to be fun. So we got a late start this morning. Uh, Thani and Toby are here. I already put the boat in the water, as you can see. And we're here at the Pasco ramp. This is Ancloke River mouth. So a lot of the grass flats near here are awesome for trout. But with this weather, I haven't decided if I'm gonna run north on those sand flats. I think I'm probably gonna stay down here and fish for trout. The weather gets a little hairy, windy. I'm gonna stay in the river itself, try to catch the snow. Let's go see what the boys are doing. You guys wanna know who's responsible for this really crappy weather? It's this guy with that camera. He's the problem. It's never bad. And here is my victim today. You guys What's know him as Thawney of Tampa Bay. Oh yeah. Today, something a little different for you. We're gonna be actually in a boat. No wow. shorelines, no piers, no seawalls, no docks. We're actually gonna do it from a boat. And with artificial lures. That's right. I haven't been doing, I haven't been fishing with artificial lures in a while. I have set up like four or five outfits that I think you're going to be impressed with just the properties of Elastec, how it works um, and how it can make a difference in catching fish. So without further ado, we'll get on board and go. This is a tandem rig and we also call this the donkey rig if we were bass fishing but it's the tandem rig and what i've got here are i've got one liter longer than the other the baits are the same size okay but this one's got a bigger hook in it so that's more or less a two-aught hook that's a three-aught hook longer piece of fluorocarbon will make it hang below the second one and as much as you think you would tangle these you throw them out there. I'm just going to throw it right there. And then you're going to work it like this. Rot it low. Yep. Let it fall a little bit. You're just working it over the grass. Nice. Watch them as they come in. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Is that not cool? See how one Impressive. stays below the other? Yeah. And you got, But you got to be patient. You don't want them up too high. Gotcha. You work this work nice slow. and slow mm -hmm. through here. I'm telling you, if there are trout around, they they it's almost like trout on demand it's almost that good this is something new to me <laughs> <laughs> it's a little it's bit so different cool. we used to do it there used to be a brand when i grew up called love lures and we threw tandems oh, yeah. all the time for and flounder love, and stuff right flounder well, and trout. but they used to make these two jigs that were tied independently and we used to bounce them just like we're doing this mm -hmm. and it used to catch just trout you know literally on demand so wow. You just got to be a little patient because the Laztec is a floating bait. So just let it, give it a second to get down and then start darting it over that grass and you'll be shocked. And basically it's one length of leader that's probably about 24, one that's 12. So it's half. Gotcha. And I've got the one swivel tied directly to the braid. The other one slides up the braid. Oh. That way if you get hit, they're not pulling against each other. 
Let's see what happens. Let's just drift on this one. Okay. And uh, if we drift, maybe we won't have to uh, put that troller down on this on this go around. And I'm gonna I'm gonna fish this chatter spike a little bit. See if anything happens. The donkey rig. It's fun, you just gotta be patient with it, but it has some killer action. It's so cool. The donkey rig. The donkey rig. It's something once you get a lot of confidence in. Yeah. You know, from this time of year through the spring, you throw that a lot, especially on flats that have a lot of that slot size under 20 inch trout, they go for that like crazy. Oh yeah. Behaving like a trout. Yep. It's a trout, not quite the size I want, but a speckle. They are beautiful fish, aren't they? This is actually a trailer bait that came out at ICAST. It's called the Chatter Spike. And it's an articulating single tail that looks like a minnow but it's really designed for the chatterbait. It's a bass, it's a bass trailer, and it's very hardy. Good looking fish. Um, I love the color of the fish here in Sports Coast country. But the, it, it, you'll see that it has kind of a, a, the old rat tail like Bass Assassin used to have, but this one just, it has so much more action and it has that little wider body little wider body, the old cheddar spike. I've been using it a lot to sight fish with. But you can, whoops. You can see how that tail just kind of swings there. It's got a great action. But a lot of it, you gotta be where the fish are. A lot of it. Too small. Is it a trout or is it a lizard fish? It's a trout, it's just a little one. Just, just, like just, cool yeah. These are juniors here, though. Not exactly the size I want to get hold of. I like to hold the fish upside down. That way they don't get too crazy. Little guy, little male, I can hear him grunting. Believe it or not, those speckled trout are part of the drum family. So when you think of redfish and black drum, they're actually a drum. Any fish that makes that, that grunting sound to attract more of their same kind, that's what they are, they're drum. So he was drumming. Usually these mirrodines will There we go. Another one. Yeah. Another one same size though. These are not slot fish at all. Whoop. Where'd he go? Go off? All right, well, he released himself. Usually they, oh, hooked up again. You waited for him. That's a trout too. Yeah. But still, you know, that's, that's what that whole tandem rig, donkey rig is all about, is you got two baits drawing a lot of attention to themselves and Oftentimes, you catch two fish at a time. You really do. And once you get the hang of it and you get a lot of confidence in it, that's all you're going to want to use. I'll let you deal with him. Whoop. Now you got to untangle it a little bit, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. That weather looks like crap. And it's going to only get worse. This will start pouring later, right? Like three? Probably, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say three, 
three, four o'clock, we should be in the truck headed home. <laughs> for sure. Right now, I'm gonna make a venue change. Run. Go. The trout. Yeah. That little four inch size is the same size I have on the on the donkey rig, and that's just a great color. I actually took a darters and I have it cut down to four inches because it seems like that size is the size of all the white bait out here. A bit better. Lots of trout though. Mm -hmm. We're we're in double digits for trout. What a temp. Cool. Yeah, it's I just checked it. It was 75 on the Raymarine. Yeah. Sometimes we try to make this too hard. A little bit better. A little bit better eat. We are getting plenty of trout, that's for sure. Seems like the jerk shads are producing a little bit bigger, bigger fish though, overall. Yeah. Oop. Yeah. Just be careful. Look at him, man. We're in the nursery today. Yeah, so cool. Small redfish. There's a big oyster bar here, that's why you can see all those little mangrove shoots and everything. But Donnie ended up pulling a nice nice juvenile red off the off the oyster bar. Oh yeah. A little more variety. Get a slow multi real quick. Need one of those about three times that big. Time of year, everything's in transition. Ready? In transition. Ready? All right, pretty cool. Felt them hit it uh, the first time, and then make, make another cast, and get them hooked up. Well, there it goes. We'll fight another day. Up quick. <laughs> this might be the best one so far. I don't know, man. This Might be the best one so far. <laughs> the confident bait. Yeah, that's what it comes down to sometimes. That's the, it's the one ingredient. Oh my gosh, look at that, CA. Yeah, much better fish. Much better fish. We'll take that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's one of those ones where you're like, take a picture of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Tough to get your hands around. Look at that. Very nice. Awesome. We'll That's what we're after. Now, if we could just get a dozen of those. Yeah. You've you've inspired me to go back to my top water. I bet there, there's still more in there. Oh, I know there are. You matched the hatch with that one, and it worked yes, out. Sir. Good deal. And it worked Inside out. Release. Having to thumb this one a little bit. I don't care what size they are, they're on top water. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. They make it good. Top water makes it good. Ooh, the Duke dog. Well, 
At least this one's a chunk. It's a chunk. It's caught there behind the ear. I do not want that hook getting me. Oh. -ho. Yeah, this one, this one here had a little bit of weight to it. chunk still not the size I want definitely get numbers I don't know how many we've caught but <laughs> the smell of my glove says a lot a lot about today hit that top water a little, maybe a little better to lower that <laughs> move trolling motor but not a bad fish it's cold it is cold classic red white oh yeah that's the old we used to call that the old number 11 or the woody woodpecker the woody woodpecker color still there having a harder time getting them to come up put, you put that you put that uh, confidence bait on and Green Lantern is just such a perfect match out here again another bicolor bait you know, dark on top light on the bottom does a good job does a good job they're on this edge here coming off that point I'm trying to pull them out of that grass by snapping this harder Lots of times you change that cadence up a little bit or even stop it like that. If they're following it, then once you start it again, they pop it. I haven't come, had one come up in a little bit. Oh, there he is. I think it's a, I think it's a trout. It's a trout. No, it's acting like a jack, isn't it? I'll bet that's what was ripping around it. Just saw a second one with him. Holy cow! You're not gonna believe this. I have caught two. I've got two jacks on the top water. I don't know if, how many of you guys play cards, but when you play play progressive, it's jacks are better to open. That means you need two pairs of jacks. <laughs> Looks like I can open. Look at that. You know what we call that? A mess. I gotta get down there and somehow get these guys undone. But, kind of fun. They competed for it and they got it. Two for one, a BOGO. I can tell you one thing I'm gonna do right now, make sure I don't get hurt. 
Da -da -da. I'm gonna get rid of that back one first, maybe. So the back one's done. Yeah, no worse for wear. These are a lot of fun when they're not 137th size. When they're when they're about well, this is a one pounder. A lot more fun when they weigh about 25 pounds. It's crazy how big those guys get. It is. It's like GT size. Oh my gosh. Yeah. a lot of these things today. I feel like we've, we've gone crappie fishing or something. We've caught so many. I mean, naturally you can't put every one of them on. Yeah. But I mean, really, when you think about it, who wouldn't like a day where you get three dozen bites? That's crazy. And yet, I'm still unsatisfied. Well, finally made it back home. Uh, a really good solid day of fishing. We caught 35 or 40 fish today. Just didn't catch quite the quality that I was expecting on the weather change. But, you know, it happens. It was a good rod bending day though, for sure. And, you know, all in all, gave me the opportunity to instill a little knowledge and a little how-to with the young guys, uh, Toby and Thani. Thawney's channel on YouTube has got quite the quite the following now and if you're not following them I encourage you to do it because they do a really good job with production when you watch his channel you can tell he is a professional videographer they do some good stuff with a YouTube channel and if you haven't followed me yet what are you waiting for please come over here and subscribe I need you on my team sooner we get the 50,000 subs the sooner I can take you to places we haven't been yet. Well, Florida Sports, Sports Coast did not disappoint today. It really did um, give us a lot of rod bending action. I can hear the thunder now because the front's coming. But I've got to get to cleaning this boat and, well, make plans to make the next YouTube video for you all tomorrow.